So it's a drive time. We're gonna go live. Just waiting to Dave to tune in. So today's discussion, we've got perception about good and bad cars. And should you take somebody else's advice when buying a used car? So here we go. Good morning, good morning, gents. Is it? That's nice. It's a nice case style. It's just a like, 2020, like cool. Tw it's like stepping into cool 2020. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> and it's a cool show. It's welcome. It's dry time in 2020 with free bold eggs. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what's the? So what's the? Call? I'm gonna just sit back now because I know you two can uh, buffle on for Britain. So like now nah, don't the, sit for too long. We're gonna we're gonna join you in as well for the conversation. So don't right, don't enjoy cool. your time as well. <laughs> Get a coffee and let's roll. You're not in Starbucks, you. You're not took over from Michael this morning, have you? No, I, well, I got a Costa now as well. No. Um, a costed or a Costa? <laughs> a Costa. <laughs> costed. A Costa. <laughs> I love it. Uh, anyway, so what we're talking about today? What's the what's the topic? All right, listeners. I'm bringing something light, um, light on for everyone because everyone is just sort of cooling down, transitioning into 2020. And uh, probably most of you will be thinking, oh, I'm gonna get rid of my car. Uh, I might get something better. What should I get? Or maybe should I actually listen to somebody? And uh, as everyone has New Year's resolutions, right? And um, most of the people probably, like I said, like I mentioned, probably will be actually thinking about getting something new, something fresh, and thinking about, oh yeah, uh, we'll make my new, uh, we'll make my new year, right? So that's why we're gonna pretty much stay really simple for today, as probably somebody is just having a hard, hard time from New Year still, <laughs> driving somewhere home, um, or going to work. Or something like that so today we will have a topic about perception about good versus bad car and um, and after them the music time we're gonna go to should you be sh should you be taking somebody else's advice when you're buying a used car and can you actually take mechanics advice when you buy a used car <laughs> so this is how we are gonna do our morning session so if you are ladies don't go anyway <laughs> so you might like it as well so ladies what do you mean <laughs> ladies if that we got lady <laughs> listeners the lady drivers so this is like right said so fred on radio this being, being a mechanic <laughs> <laughs> listening to the free bold eggs you know and um should you be buying a car <laughs> a perceptions <laughs> All right. Um, well, Jimbo, Jimbo's the expert on this. Jimbo he? is the expert, yeah. <laughs> and we have a guest, um, the right guest sometimes, and um, that's why we got a guest to ask him: Can we actually, can we actually take advice from mechanic, or and should we? And uh, Jim, yeah. In your opinion, what is? Um, in your perception, um, good was a uh, good or bad car, right? Well, I can answer that for you as well, Jim. I get wheels, wheels at the steering wheel. If you haven't got them, you're buggered. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim will tell you the way. <laughs> After the new year, how can you determine? Dude, is it a good or bad car? <laughs> Won't you have too many whiskeys? Well, 
you there, pal? We've lost you. That's it, you've come back now. Yeah, he's We've back. I was thinking it's um, me again. <laughs> oh god, no, thanks for that. Ah, <laughs> uh, there is such thing as good cars and bad cars, but it also depends on you've got a few factors like reliability and um, whether you can parts for them. I mean, for instance, uh, if you're in Australia and somebody said, oh, get yourself a Volvo, parts for Volvos are hard to get in Australia. So most Australians are probably saying, ah, if they get a Volvo, you can't get parts for them. So, it's really, it depends on where you are and what you're using the car for. Um, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of Toyotas and Lexus because they're a pretty, pretty big global brand and they do get quite quite a lot of hard use in a lot of the bigger countries like um, Japan and the Middle East and that. You know, that's, that's where they use them a lot. So you, you tend to see these type of vehicles getting put through their paces. You can tell they're decent. But on the other hand, but our climate, if you were to buy a Volvo here, it's one of the most reliable cars you can get here, and the parts are more readily available. So there is, there's variables, but it depends on where you are, what you're using the car for. Let me throw something broad in. In my perception, um, what is good versus bad. So you might, you might clinch where I'm going with this. Um, not about specifics of the cars, but I mean about the idea. Um, what is good? The perception about good versus bad. In my, it, it, the way I think, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit about philosophy, right? Technically, it doesn't exist, right? And probably you. Bobby Dave think, what is he talking about? Nonsense, right? I am. I'm thinking that. <laughs> you're not far wrong, lad. You think you're psychic as well, as well as being a kid. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is the way we do things. And um, it's only a bad owner, right? There's no good... Uh, there's a, Technically, there's no bad car, right? All the cars well, would be good is, if you would have a, a good, responsible <laughs> owner. <laughs> <laughs> and if the gym would fix every single car really well, <laughs> we would have great cars. <laughs> well, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, we're not blaming gym, <laughs> but if the if the owners would be taking the vehicles to the right manufacturing schedules to the gym, right, and or asking gym to actually because the gym is mobile, or asking gym to come out and repair the vehicle according to manufacturer schedules and maintenance times then we will have no bad cars and if the <laughs> if the uh, basically the owners would be replacing uh jim's suggestions uh, according uh, advisories i mean yeah um in a, in the right time like the uh, the bushes especially the suspension parts uh, so it's not like three times you're going for the mot or looking in uh, three uh, three years past into mot um, history and you can see the same thing has been advised for three, four times. <laughs> so you, that's you where the gym I'm going. You remember the Allegro? You remember the Allegro's gym? Right. <laughs> uh, remember the suspension on them? Uh, hydroelastic, yeah. My God, it was. You'd end up with a nosebleed. You bounce that eye if you went over something in the road with him, wouldn't you? It was. It was great. It was like sitting in a trampoline with a steering wheel. <laughs> it was. I'll never forget them cars. It what car is it? I'm I missing something. Austin here. Allegro. If you check it out, Austin oh Allegro. Austin. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You might not have had them in Latvia. No, nah, definitely not. <laughs> it, it's one of them or a horse and car. But trust me, if you were back in Latvia and you had the choice between an Austin Allegro and a horse and car, you go for the horse and car all day long. <laughs> oh, we had the Moscovites and ladders, you know, so we, we wouldn't be far away from that. They, but they copied it from Italians anyway, so. <laughs> What's the, what's the worst car, Jimbo, that you think that anybody, say a family of four, it, it, the, the father is saying, right, we're going to get a new car this year for the family, what should we go and get? But you thought, you're thinking, what's the worst car that you could buy? Well, there's no. Say, <laughs> Such I'm, a I'm thing. Say, I would say uh, a manufacturer, what, what I would say is a lot of people buy things with fancy badges thinking they're getting a great car. But a lot of the time, these fancy cars have got cheaper cars, engines in them for different manufacturers. There's one one German car in specific that I was specifically thinking of that's got a Renault engine in it. Um, a German car? 
Yes, a lot of them share different engines. It's the same like the the mini. The mini has got the mini has got two coils now. Yeah, he's got a good point. <laughs> I'm trying to think now what that is. Uh, Mercedes A class. Has it? He's got a good engine in it, has it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, which one? The new ones are you talking about, Jim, now? Newer. Newer ones, yeah. Um, the ones that are like, shaped like an Astra. They're talking maybe oh, 62 plate, uh, 2012 onwards. Um, so they're still quite expensive, but I mean, they've got. You're buying a car there, so you're thinking you're buying a pure Mercedes, but in actual fact, it's, it's, it's got rental parts on it, which is, equates to, like, if you're buying a. For instance, a, a Dacia Duster, the same engine. Yeah. You can buy a Dacia Duster or a Mercedes with the same, with the same uh, engine block. <laughs> now, so, apparently, right, I've got to tell you this. Right, I've had a message from Lorraine Finley. Right. I like that. Female criteria for car purchasing. Check this out. Right? Go on. Lighting, lighting to accommodate Instagram filter. <laughs> advanced, parking, advanced parking sensors, matching nail polish, whatever that is, for emergency <laughs> top jobs when aforementioned sensors let you down. <laughs> That's a great idea. Charging point for mobile phone, wipe clean seats for spillages, makeup, etc. Don't even know where she's going with that. That's a bit of filth for her. <laughs> Shotting visor for sunglasses, etc. Or slotting visor for sunglasses, not shot. Slotting. <laughs> so everything's perfectly on. Exactly. Also tolerant, sat nav with nice voice. All boxes ticked. So if there's any cars out there for women that sound like they've got all that available, then uh, the women will be buying them for New Year. Yeah, they can buy any car with me inside and um, I can sort everything out. I'll never forget years ago, right? I had a. One of my mother's friends, she, she said, oh, I bought this car because it had lovely carpet in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that was probably the greatest <laughs> buy ever. <laughs> oh, couldn't believe it when, when he did that. <clears throat> anyway, at that point, should we go to music? Yes, let's go to the music. Okay. What, uh, what are you going to put on for uh, our listeners today, this morning? I'm going to put a tango on, especially for you from Latvia, representing all, all regions European, but then I thought I better not. I'll yeah, let's do that. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like your thinking, Dave. In 2020, you know, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> How have you been? How have you been, Jim, in 2020? Oh, it's alright. I'm just uh, everything tastes like turkey and chocolate just now. Is it? <laughs> we live on a Facebook, by the way, as well. <laughs> just uh, oh, just get back in the swing of things. I think I'll be. I think by the end of the day, and the next week, I'll be returning to normality again. Is Never it? Know when the end is between Christmas and New Year. Are you being uh, quiet or? Um, I haven't been. I haven't been out much. You know, I've just been visiting relatives and the kids have been enjoying the Christmas stuff in the house. So uh, it's been okay. Yourself? Uh, yeah, I've been walking. Uh, I've been um, cracking on on so social media stuff. I had so many things to do. I just been. Uh, I just been waiting when everyone will switch off. You know. Um, and I just needed to get things done, um, and um, that I kind of really didn't switch off. Yesterday I switched off a bit, uh, but then I need to switch back on <laughs> because of the drive time. <laughs> needed to get prepared for the drive time. And, um, Have you got family here? No, 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 no. Uh, everyone is back home. Um, I'm just right. rolling here on my own. I just need to make a moves. <laughs> How's the, how's the job going? Oh, it's, 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 it's getting busier. So we've got massive plans for this year. and um, We've done so many things last year. It was just incredible. Uh, I just was looking back. It was just crazy. And how long is that you've, you've been on the go? We launched it on, in uh, the Car Examiner um, in June. Yeah. So only in June. So um, 
but it's been it's been hectic. We changed two platforms, so we now introduce tips for inspectors. That mean customers getting notifications from start to finish. The PDF notifications of the car data for free and the additional data when they buying um, the HPI checks, car history checks, the battery data, tire data. So everything is instant into the um, email report and um, all the pictures. I mean, it's second to none. Um, we are way, there's no one, basically we are way ahead in the game, uh, anyone else in the UK. There's even AA and RAC, they're not, they even like miles behind. And, um, well, they even will be uh, once we launch another stuff this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So that, is that software you've made, or is it software you, you're taking to somewhere else? Is no, it no, it's been custom made. Um, got developers, uh, they're constantly working, uh, we're constantly working on things. Um, so, is that expensive? I mean, yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it, you have to pay all the time. It's like a soft. I mean, the platform itself is just something which never stops developing. It's always moving, you know. So there will be digital inspections for garages to buy, to purchase. So now inspect. We, we had to increase the prices for inspections, so you can have a look into it. Welcome back to Drive Time. If, if you just tuned in, you don't know what it is. It's Expat Radio UK. It's dry time with clamps, with clamps, and you got Jim as a guest, and you got Dave, who um, he's somewhere in France, and um, he's bold. <laughs> <laughs> he's bold. <laughs> he, you know, he, he, he's pretty humble, isn't he? Yeah. I want, I want more Latvians for New Year. Have we got any more? Can we get any more coming in? Coming in with you? Yeah, we, uh, why not? Can you get a bus load? We still haven't left the Brexit. We haven't left the, uh, the EU. We'll get, we'll get you a head of lights. We'll get you filmed. We've got to do that. When we start Expat TV, we've got to get you on there. People have got to understand that it's not Charlie Brown walking around with that cap on. It's you. Yeah, it's me. It's just because I'm just hiding my boldness, my, <laughs> my bold head. So, yeah, at exactly. least in a hat, I look pretty, you know. <laughs> I look more gorgeous. <laughs> uh, anyway, right. So, if you're in France, you wear a berry, yeah? Do what, pal? If you're in France, you wear a berry. No, I don't wear the berry. I've got the onions around my neck. You want to see them? <laughs> I've got them to my, my eyes every five minutes. It's an army. It keeps flies away, though. That's what the French don't get. <clears throat> He spent the fortune on these curtains that, that, that uh, and these things that hang down from a ceiling that have got sticky stuff on it to catch flies. They drive you up the bloody wall, but if you wear onions around your neck, seriously, you don't get a fly near you or a mosquito. And you keep that in a car when you're driving around? No, no, no I, can't. I have it. No, I don't drive it around with it. I have them on all the time. No, I, have a belt. I have a belt with them as well, <laughs> so you don't get mosquitoes biting your ass. Jim, imagine Dave comes out from his Fiat 500, right, with those... Um, <laughs> What did he say? What do you have around your, around your neck? The cucumbers? Onions. 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 Yeah, in, as well. Onions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much get them at every... <laughs> you get shallots, but you get onions as well. <laughs> onions are one of the oldest vegetables you can do without an invented. Dave, listen to that. <laughs> How the hell have we gone from onions to cows? That's what I want to know. Or cows to onions. <laughs> Because you started it, <laughs> because you yeah, wanted oh, you, you wanted some Latvians to come in over. <laughs> yeah, but well, we want more. Seriously, anyone else in Latvia? 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 Where's Latvia? Anyone else in Latvia that wants to come over back to? Well, in the UK, Jim's got a big garage. Yeah. In Scotland that he can move into. We can we can be an Airbnb. Seriously. Yeah, we can make it. Uh, we, we can get some uh, double decker bus and house everyone. <laughs> Yeah, let me know, change. <laughs> Thing is, he'll turn up with a horse and cart. My God, the amount of... They'll be starting trotting races up in the, up in where Jim is. There'll be, there'll be horses and carts on the roads up there. No traffic jams, there'll just be horse crap everywhere. And people shoveling it up in the roses in the gardens. There'll be an influx of gardens, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and a baldy French helping out all the Latvians, you know, <laughs> bringing coffees around. <laughs> With, with, with onion chain around the neck. <laughs> Get a website up and running, clubs for Latvians that want to disappear from the country and end up in Scotland. Seriously, we can make a fortune out of this. Jim can start another business now. <laughs> no, we can. We can sell, like I said, we can't examine a and franchises. You know, no, to the Latvian that. mechanics. No, 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 forget that. We'll just get horse and carts. We'll do trips around Scotland in horse and carts. And, and we can house them in Jim's garage. We get the horse. We can turn that into a stable and a bed and breakfast. Seriously. I'm talking mm. sound serious here. We can make an absolute killing out of Yes, this. and we can be famous as well in, a, in, in some local newspaper, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> illegal bed and breakfast. <laughs> You'll be like Mr. Ed stood there next to one of your horses and a horse and cat. <laughs> 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 Lanty and Tours in Scotland. Come book with us now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're well off topic now, boys. All right. No, no, well, anyway, what were we on about cars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <You're... laughs> we definitely <laughs> drifted <laughs> away. <laughs> I think we have a, a lot of followers now, right? I mean, did we double, uh, tripled in listeners now? I mean... You, got na- you ju- just got na- short of 92,000 on this morning, and <laughs> half, of them, half of them are looking at putting a bet on in the, <laughs> in the horse and cart races. In, uh, they have trotting races over here in France. <laughs> <laughs> so at least we have a French listener, that's good. <laughs> You know? Oh no, well apparently they're tuning to, le- to learn English, so they're going to have a field day, aren't they, learning English off me and Jim and you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at, at least we're like providing that. some sort of education um, oh, for, the, for the French audience and, and that's that's really good for 2020. So, um, you, re- you, remember that, but you remember that program years ago, Jim, about that classroom with all the different nationalities in it that were learning English? What was it, what was it called? Was it... You remember what it was, that sitcom? Uh, when was, when was the date of that? How, how long were we well, talking about? Well, it was in the 70s. This was in the 70s. I always remember it, though, because there was, like, Indians in it and Pakistanis, and then there was the Chinese and the <laughs> characters. And they were all trying to learn English, and they were, the, they were coming out with phrases that were absolutely, you know, they were alien to, what, to the language completely. I mean, they, they had Pakistanis going, oh, hey, they knew, you know, and he just... <laughs> Oh, they come out with something that was... Oh, it was ridiculous. It was all over the place, but it was funny. <laughs> but oh, now, it's like no, on YouTube that does that. He's a Korean, Korean Billy. He does local dialects from all over Britain, and he's in Korea. Yeah. I've seen him. He's a similar, he's got a similar thing going on. It's hilarious. Yeah. Well, uh, there we go, Klaus. If you can pick up some more language, some more languages from one-liners... <laughs> <you'd> be... <laughs> yeah, I can speak Latvian and Russian, so... Yeah. And... No, I don't want you to... Make... Say Happy New Year, New Year in Latvian for us. Lai Miguel Nogadu. Dio Tokstos Dio Tokstos Dio Godam. That would be uh, in Russian. It's like something on a menu in a drive through McDonald's, haven't it? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Snovim Godam Ribiata. <laughs> I totally agree with what you're saying there. So anyway. <laughs> Happy New Year, my friends. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, can we take an advice from um, Dave? You were talking about a Renault, a Renault engine being in a Mercedes A class. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna really upset my stepmother. That there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things in the motor trade where the, you've got Range Rover Evokes with Ford Mondeo engines um, and other similar things. I mean. They all share a lot of the engines and gearboxes are all shared through different manufacturers, which makes sense really. It's just how they put the cars together and trim them, it makes a difference. But, um, no, you're buying one thing, you think you're buying something that's made by a certain company, but actually, Parker, it's, for, it's a lot of the time it's from cheaper vehicles that you could buy from another manufacturer. So, no, it's, uh, but it's a brand loyalty, right? Um, somebody. Well, I, for instance, know somebody who, who was who had a sorry, interrupt you there. I, I knew somebody that bought a Toyota uh, Avensis and was delighted with it, but then it started having problems with it. Uh, we went to look at it for them, 
and it had a BMW engine in it. Um, and he was he had actually contacted Toyota to to complain because um, he was not happy about that. So it just goes to show you, I mean, people are buying things, thinking about one thing, and then you open the bonnet, take some covers off, and find out that it's, it's a different manufacturer. So it's good to it's good to at least discuss a wee bit of homework first before you buy stuff, just to try and make sure you're getting what you're paying for. I mean, th th that's the situation. There's nothing you can sort of really do about it. It's, it's just whether you like it. I believe um, it's whether you buy if you like it, if you don't buy, if you don't like it. If it, if the vehicle vehicle's price doesn't make any sense, you just go for something else. And uh, if you like it, you, you're not going to go for a Mercedes. You're not going to buy Renault because it's Mercedes, because it had the Renault engine in it, right? The, the person, I mean, let's talk about ladies, right? They, they, for them, it's important to put a filter on, and then she just will not buy the Renault, because it would be cheaper to buy a Renault. <laughs> she would want to have a Mercedes, because it would look better, right? Yeah, that's good enough. That's... You know, it's just the perception. There's so many perceptions going on, <laughs> you know? Um, so that would be just. In all fairness, um, the French make some of the best diesel engines in the world as well. So I mean, just the fact it's got a Renault engine doesn't mean you say it's a bad car. Yeah, it's it quite powerful. I like to drive. It's quite dynamic, um, yeah. well driven. I, I quite like the Peugeot diesel engine. You know. Um, so. I've got to tell you about the Renault story. <laughs> I was driving, I used to I used to work for Europe Car at Manchester Airport years ago when I was a kid, I was about 19, 20, and I used to get the I used to get, have the driver's job. Did they trusted the you with that? Hey? <laughs> Did they trusted you? <laughs> yeah, well, I had to go up into the multi-storey car park when the cars were brought back, when they hired them out, I had to drive them back down to the bay for them to valet them, put fuel in, and then they were ready for going out again. Mm. And I brought back this Renault 17, I'll never forget it. It Damn. was Renault 19, Renault 19 it was, and I brought it back into the bay, and as it, as it came in, it was like a massive garage, and at the, inside you had uh, bays where you where they valeted the cars, and as I came in, uh, there, was a, there was a line of other cars in front of me, and as I, as I came into this garage, as I come through the doorway, I had my foot, my left foot was on a footrest, but I thought it was a clutch. <laughs> <laughs> In the because the Renault was <clears throat> most of them had, the, had for some reason the pedals are really close together and the and the footrest was on the left hand side of this foot footwell and uh, I thought I had my left foot on the clutch as I'm coming into this bay into this garage and I was heading into the back of this car and it was a Clio in front of me <clears throat> parked up with one of the lads working on it inside valeting it and as I've come in I'm doing about 15 mile an hour coming into the back of this garage, put my foot on this foot on this footrest thinking it was a clutch, hit the hit the clutch thinking it was a brake and I'm, I'm pumping the clutch thinking it's not it's not stopping. <laughs> the next minute boom, I've hit the back of this Cleo <laughs> <laughs> This lad inside he's valeting with the Hoover he, he fell out of the car thinking yeah. what the hell has happened <laughs> And I'm sat there with me with my shoulders like a Frenchman up in the air going and my hands out in front of me begging begging for forgiveness. <laughs> saying I have no idea what happened there. It was the first time I'd ever driven this in one of these cars, these Renault nineteens. And I swore blind after that I'd never get in one. Dave <laughs> It was horses uh, of some thing. Hey? So some of these cars can be quite quirky when you're jumping in and out of them all day, different makes and models. Some of them yeah. are a bit odd, some of the layouts and stuff. Yeah, the, well, the boots. Do you remember the big boots? Nowadays, we've got this electric handbrake. It's the same. Yeah. I found the switch for electric handbrake so you can actually go anywhere. Oh, no. Well, I had the same case with the, with the Merc as well. A guy turned up from Germany. Well, no, he, he'd flown in from somewhere. I don't know where he'd flown in from, but he came running up to me. Give me the keys for the car. And I said, all right, well, I've got to come out and show you everything. No, 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 I know, I know. So he grabbed the keys off. He goes, running out. The car was outside departures at Manchester. Arrivals outside Manchester. But jumped in the car, and I could see him faffing about trying to get this thing moved. And he, the next thing, he's come back in. I can't move it. I don't know what's wrong with it. Oh, God. So I had to go out then. And explain to you that, the, that he had to release the foot brake. The, there was like a handbrake on the right hand side, 
the actual handbrake was up brake and he had to release it. <laughs> and then I showed him, and he, I tell you, but he was killing, he was jumping up and down like mad. And I'm waiting for this meeting, I've got to go. And I said, well, you need to know where this is. And I was like, you'll never, you'll never move the car again. So, bless him. <laughs> so, that was my, that was my happy day, isn't it? Anyway, we're running out of time, boys. That was a fast show today, but we'll, uh, We'll get, so we've got Michael back with you, with you both on uh, Tuesday, have we? Nah, the Michael, Michael has so many court cases going on. Um, the, Ma- the yeah, we're gonna the miss Michael for next couple of <laughs> couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't sound good, that does it? When you first say that, he's got he's in court so often. Yes, <laughs> yes, he's he's um independent engineer, so um he's he had so many write ups deadlines coming up to so he's gonna he's gonna have fun times right and um right. we're gonna get him on at some point and um yeah so that was today's show a bit of brief um a bit of e- easier than ever um, normally we do and um i hope you, you enjoyed know, we'll, it we'll be back tuesday we'll do tuesday. we'll have you we'll we'll both back on on tuesday and we'll be talking about uh, well you you we're going about talking about Instagram filters, you know, and uh, which is the best voice for their lady drivers, uh, uh, yeah. you know. We'll get Finley involved, we'll get her on the case. That'll be a big seller. Women's, women's big car, that'll be in women's magazines all around the world now. Yeah, best best, best picture on Instagram uh, uh, for, the, for the lady, you know. Which car would suit for any lady looking great on Instagram picture with the filter on? Oh, oh. Which, and which bucket looks the best with a nude lady sat on it? Oh, my God. <laughs> and my and my voice oh, as a sat now. <laughs> the thing is, they pop if anyone sat on that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway, thanks for joining in. It was Expat Radio, Drive Time with Clavs. Um, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Dave. We'll see you Tuesday. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to go out with I'm Too Sexy from Right Said Fred, especially for your honor today. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Adios, boys. Adios. Adios. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining in. Peace. And join Clavs back on Thursday as well.